Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, it's time to do my first impressions on the new Soulblight book for third edition for Age of Sigma. Uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a faction that's very dear to my heart. Uh, I love Undead uh, so much so that, you know, if you've noticed, uh, I have my own brand, Blood of Gods, which is all based on necromancy, undead and demons and so on. Um, so I'm really invested in them, you might say. And uh, I, I've done previous uh, videos on Soulblight for the previous book and uh, some revised thoughts as well, um, you know, and, and, and just go through my thoughts on that and and so we're gonna we're gonna do that again for the third edition book because uh, yeah there's been some improvements a lot of things have changed uh, in that book uh, and and moved on and it's a pretty interesting one to talk about and uh, so I'm really really keen to um, get into that so that's what we're gonna do today and in uh, while we do that we're gonna be painting this new mini for the Soulbite range that came out with the book um, I think she, she's called uh, it is it Ivia Volga or something like that? Anyway, she's like, I don't know, I guess the, the granddaughter or the niece or something like that of uh, Bella Dharma. And uh, I think she's going to be a really fun one to paint. We're going to be doing her in uh, my usual blue green blend uh, scheme. And uh, I've got many videos on that if you want to check them out on the channel. Uh, and I've done Bella Dharma on the channel as well as a how to paint video. So that's there too. If I'm really good, I'll try to put some of those in, in the description or up in the top right hand corner now. Uh, so you can go and take a look at those if you want to. But you'll be seeing the, the full color scheme on this one. It's a really beautiful model. I like it a lot. It's got a ton of dynamism. You know, uh, it's it's definitely a uh, a tick. You know, in in the box for uh, people that love vampires and so on like that. It's a really cool one. Uh, and so yeah, we're going to be getting into that. But just before we do, I thought I'd give you a little Easter egg uh, for those who've been following along on my vo vlogs or um, any of that sort of content, or are just curious about all the images that you might see on thumbnails uh, at the beginning of every video. There's a little skeleton, uh, etc., which are part of my my own brand. So I've been very diligently going along and. Um, you know, training myself to sculpt for miniature scales. And I've got a little uh, something to show here that's like the first, I guess, prototype uh, for that range. Uh, and it's the, the skeleton that you see in every video. So that little skeleton warrior with the shield where the paint list is at the beginning of the video. Uh, so I've now done him in... Um, yeah, in miniature scale, right? So this would be like a heroic uh, 28 mil, so in, in in a very similar scale to a GW model or something like that. And uh, yeah, super cool. I'm really, really happy with this. So it's just a prototype. There'll be some changes, etc. But it's it's extremely close to that type of scale. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. So just something really fun to show. Um, this will be a, a while off yet before I actually release these as a product. But um, yeah, they're, there's, they're, they're coming along really well. So there's a whole range of them, uh, you know, different characters, etc. You can see all that on the website all the characters and minions are there at least the initial ones and a lot of those are sculpted uh, and, and, and sort of in the process of being ready to, to release. But yeah, I'm, I'm coming along with it well. This has taken a long time to figure out how to do this. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, sculpting in this scale is very hard. Uh, you have to exaggerate the forms a lot. And so uh, trying to get that uh, really satisfying look on that scale like a GW model has, if we put them side by side, it, it's a really, really uh, tough thing to do. Uh, you really start to appreciate just how good the designers are in the GW studio that do these, uh, these sculpts uh, and manage to pull off that level of um, yeah, just just uh, the, the the strength of those forms and 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 the paintability of that is is really is really quite something, uh, and it's something that. I guess gets overlooked a lot. We just we just think, oh yeah, GW models are, are cool, but there's a reason why they're cool, and it goes down to that very uh, base level of, of understanding of, of sculpture itself. Um, so I'm really happy that I've got somewhere close to this type of thing. Uh, I don't think it's you know obviously it's not quite there yet, but the the shapes and everything that I'm achieving I think are going to be good to paint essentially, which is what I'm really looking for. Something that's uh, fun to paint and fun to uh, put on the table, right? So yeah, it's really really good. All right, so I'll put that little shameless plug aside and. And uh, I think we should start talking about some soul blight, eh? All right, so where to begin? Well, you know, after the last uh, time we looked at Soul Blight and I gave my revised thoughts, you know, I think um, overall the uh, book before this one, which I guess was a second edition book moving into third edition, uh, was, was a was a pretty decent book, you know, by the end. However, I think it did struggle a little bit and it has struggled a little bit as the edition has gone on. And we've just seen, you know, uh, quite a plethora of really well, well done books in the last, you know, sort of 12 months uh, that have really uh, outshone something 
something like the Soul Bite book. Uh, so on, on its own, as its own book, it, it was okay. And you know, I, I came around to it. I was a little bit lukewarm on it to begin with, um, but but you know, it was it was okay. Uh, I, I still think it, it had um, some shortcomings, and I felt like that that's it wasn't quite hitting the mark for me, just as personally as a, as an undead player and, and someone that loves all that. Uh, it didn't quite for me get across the full experience that that I, that I was trying to get out of it. You know, uh, and, and and that's sort of a more I guess I want to see that summoning. I want to see the necromancy. I want to see you know those sorts of focuses. Uh, you know all that stuff, and that, that was there, but uh, maybe just not in the areas that that I might have liked. Uh, we all have that, right? For our our, our pet army, the, the faction that we love, if it doesn't quite have those things that we always love, we tend to look it down on it, you know. Uh, and, and that's okay, you know. I understand that's just you know my my own little uh, personal tastes coming out and, and wanting that and trying to impose that on, on a book rather than looking at it objectively and just seeing whether it's a good book. And so, you know, I, I conceded on that. I, I understand that it was, you know, uh, you know, a decent book by the end. Uh, but now coming into this uh, third edition book, we now see, you know, an advancement of that and, and, and a much better, I think, uh, crafted book and something that fits more into the current game and, and, and what the current game is doing, which is great. So it, it is definitely hitting the mark this time. However, it still does have some carryover effects, um, which I'll just touch on now, which is that uh, this also is something that you'll see in other books like, let's say, Sk the Skaven book and others that are similar. Not that this one is necessarily copy and pasted or anything like that, because it is definitely quite a substantial difference from the previous books. There's a lot of fundamental differences in this book uh, and how units work and so on, uh, and special rules, etc. But, um, you know, you do get this sort of copy and paste carryover, or at least, or at least a... Um, you know, a carryover ideology that comes from a previous game set and, and a previous game state uh, and meta and so on. And, and so some War Scrolls end up not really getting the love that they need to, to lift them into the into the, the, the current world that the game lives in. And a lot there's a lot of reasons for this. The, the books are done at a time, not in the same time period that they're released, etc. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons. But, you know, uh, some War Scrolls really feel like they've never been touched, you know. And and in the, in the previous side book, you, you saw a little bit of that, you know, you see that a little bit with Skaven sometimes, and you're seeing it here with 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 uh, even this new book. Um, you know, th uh, a good example of that is things like those the Palaquin uh, thing, the engines. Uh, most of their rules seem like uh, old AOS sort of style War Scroll um, design and structure, and uh, things like the Zombie Dragon, the unmounted version, uh, the Terror Geist unmounted version. They they don't really feel like they do anything really, uh, and, and you get that the odd. Uh, War Scroll like this, but there, there's there's some standouts there, and so even within this new Soulblight book, there are some um, units that unfortunately don't get, quite get the love that they that they deserve, I guess. Especially those engines are really beautiful models, but they just don't seem to have the rules that 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 um, that correspond. I think there's that the the, the Coven the Coven Throne um, that seems to have decent enough rules where you might actually consider it, but the other two don't. So you know, I won't I won't bang on about this particular uh, negative point too much. Um, but I just wanted to bring it up that you know some some of these factions in in in, um, in Age of Sigma still seem like they do tend to carry over a little bit of that Warhammer fantasy, I, I guess baggage and they don't quite detach themselves from that and and in some ways that's really cool because it, it gives you a consistency through through design law and so on but then other ways it also restricts certain uh, avenues for design and gameplay and, and, and making those war scrolls actually really uh, come alive and become more useful overall but you know this is a challenge that all designers have when they're trying to do this under constraints etc it makes it very difficult and I, I certainly appreciate that so I'm not going to uh, go on too much more on that front so with that initial kind of, I guess, you know, observation to do with the design of the book. Let, let's let's really dig into um, what, what what's what's really going on. And and overall, we'll put the spoilers up front. I think it's a really great book, and it and it has a lot to offer. And I think that that's uh, really great for undead players because it, it feels like it's got a, more of a toolbox uh, nature to uh, the list construction, uh, the kind of pieces you'll fit in and fit out, and so on. Uh, and it has the different damage areas that you want. Like if you want a hammer, that does exist. If you want something more, more that's an anvil that does exist the different job roles that exist inside Warhammer in tabletop wargaming generally uh, this book does have those which is really good because some armies don't get that and they miss out on some of those elements and 
with those armies, that means that they're very pushed into one type of build construction and they don't get to really play around with a, a broader selection. And that can be really great for some. It, it makes them more characterful. But um, for me personally, I like I like books that have a lot of options and a lot of different ways that you can build it. It's one of the reasons why, why I love uh, Stormcast because they, they do have that. They've got a wide selection. And, uh, you know, as you've seen, they're the first book. But as, as, the, the, seas, as the, the edition has gone on, you still see them in tournaments. They still they still uh, do very well, although they are in the middle pack. But um, uh, with good players, you'll see uh, variant list, push lists, uh, really strange lists. You know, all kinds of um, weird and wonderful ways that that players come up with to make a new list for Stormcast and uh, and keep them fresh. And that 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 just goes on and on throughout the edition. And so they're they're one army that I think does that really well. Even though sometimes um, their war scrolls and so on can be a little bit, I guess, dull for for some players. Uh, and yet still they manage to uh, have enough in there to where you can still make different lists. And I think that Soul Blight is one of those books that does this too. Just like, let's say, Slaves to Darkness, which is an excellent book uh, that also has that list variety and construction. Uh, and, and, and so too now I think Soul Blight have that. The different um, bloodlines give you uh, different options. It's really going to push you down certain roads, but I think that they all offer something unique and, uh, and change maybe even the the unit choices you know the core units that you'll want to take uh, and the kinds of things that might be possible so obviously things like summonable units and vampires those keywords and so on are obviously very important and a lot of the buffs and synergies and so on are, 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 are revolving around that the other really crucial i guess fundamental change which is something that is unique to soul blight i think entirely is that because there's so many unique uh, uh, Veacross uh, units, like the, all these unique characters, which is, I guess, a carryover from Curve City and then coming into the book, uh, you know, this has uh, created a state where now they've given a rule to these characters that they can take command traits and artifacts, just like, a, like an unnamed uh, character can. So I think that's the only... Uh, I guess sub-faction or faction or anything in any book that's allowed to do this but you can do this for these Vicross uh, characters right and and that's really really interesting now granted their uh, command traits and artifacts aren't like super pushed or super amazing but they're also not bad either and that's something you'll see across most of the artifacts and command traits across um, all of the bloodlines you've got some real standouts and some really really great ones but overall there's not a lot of like actual duds in the book. There's a lot of like, you know, corner case, uh, very uh, only in sometimes used kind of kind of artifacts and, tra and command traits. But overall, they're all pretty, pretty decent. And you could see a list that might run them. And in this case, that's a really, really fun thing that these unique characters now, uh, you know, these little wolf, wolf pack uh, vampires get a chance to actually get access to these sort of special rules to layer on top of the special rules they already have. The standout there is the phylactery or whatever it is that um, the does the ward save thing so you put that onto Belladama and, and and so on and then you're getting this this uh, aura where you're you're uh, improving the ward save of the summonable units to a five so things like I think it's all summonable units or it could just be I'm pretty sure it's all summonable units so you know things like wolves or um, that sort of thing are really great for that or, or skeletons etc uh, you know you, you've got you've got some play there and there's an additional cursed city character uh, I'm not going to say his name because it's too it's too long it's the the one with the bird and the you know he's like a little old man grouchy old man character uh, and, and he also does a ward safe thing as well so you can have a couple of bubbles of five up wards uh, so that's really interesting um, you know it's kind of doing like a cheap version of what Nagash gives to, to units around him um, you know there's all these like really interesting little plays and things so you know you've got that as well which is a whole nother layer that's never been in any other book and that's really exciting because it's opening up a space now you don't want that across the whole of Age of Sigma because that's really like dangerous and, and very powerful but in the case of something like this uh, this Veacross Dynasty and, and the characters that are inside of it, I think that they've done a really good job at keeping it limited and keeping it just enough to make it spicy, but not enough to really overpower anything. But overall, uh, if you then look at the, the wider breadth of the book, we're seeing a, a lot of strong abilities. So obviously the, the dynasty that everyone will be taking in is, is the clear, I guess, competitive choice uh, generally. Although, as I said, there's a lot of arguments for the other ones too, but obviously Legion of Blood and, you know, the uh, for the vampires, the plus one attack outside of three inches and within three inches of combat, uh, you've got the, um, sorry, 
within three inches of combat is is uh, is the plus one attack when you're in combat, and then outside of that is the is the um, the plus one to cast and so on. So you've got like a really good um, basic ability for all your vampires. This includes the unique ones, so Neferata has it, etc. So you're getting pluses to cast uh, and all of that, and then you're getting uh, extra attack in combat, which also then uh, doubles up really well on a vampire lord on zombie dragon, etc. We all know these the, the really obvious synergies, right? But it, it's 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 perfect. And then and then uh, the Legend of Bond, I think, have the the cloak of mist and shadows, and that's the one that where it basically you have no negative or uh, positive modifiers can be applied uh, to the to the bearer. So that means that you're always on a three up save. So that's perfect for the for the uh, vampire lord on zombie dragon, and so on and so on and so on. So you you can really see how their command traits and their and their artifacts really pair up for specific units. Uh, but it, it's not always as obvious as that. Sometimes you get one that, that you know you might put on on a different on different uh, character, etc. But there is kind of like a design kind of push towards a certain thing. But because all the all the dynasties pretty much are interesting, and you might want to run them, uh, there are a, a couple of flavor dynasties, I guess. You know the the Avangori and I guess to some extent the Castellai, the the Blood Dragons. Um, Although they do have a pretty good, uh, you know, artifact and so on for the for the the vampire lord on zombie dragon, there's 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 an argument made there. But um, yeah, the the Legion of Blood is probably the top. Legion of Night is really interesting. You know, we've, we've got some good abilities in there too. You can have a um, heroic action to uh, teleport a vampire lord. Um, I think the vampire lord on foot can get it. I don't know if all vampires can do that. I, I don't remember whether there was any stipulation on that. But anyway, at least the one on foot can be jumping around the battlefield. Um, uh, you get you get the claw, which gives the plus two to cast. So you still have to stand still, but you could you know jump him somewhere and then and then put out that buff for other other vampires nearby who might want to cast. So there, there, there's a lot of different little plays there you can do. Um, they have some other really interesting uh, stuff for movement, for um, reacting to uh, something being charged, etc. I think that's in Legion of Night. So there are some good little uh, maneuvement maneuverable plays there. Uh, Manfred can um, reactively charge instead of redeploy, uh, which is really interesting. It sort of changed his role in the army. Uh, so there, there's, there's all kinds of interesting um, elements and, and little little like tag team plays. And this goes all the way through the book. You, you're seeing it over and over again. The lady that I'm currently painting for you in, in front of you as, as you listen to me waffle on about Soulblight, you know, her ability is really amazing. You know, dropping the attack uh, profiles of a monster down to one for each of the, their profiles or their attacks uh, is a massive debuff and uh, is going to be very, very useful. Uh, in a lot of matchups and something that you know your opponent will have to really really watch because if she gets close that's going to be uh pretty terrible and you know and and, and couple alongside the veercross ability to uh charge with the vampire and then activate another unit to also then um attack as well so you've got these these uh little tag team plays that could be set up alongside uh you know abilities like this that could be really really interesting and and, the, and, and again this goes through the book over and over and over again and then we come to uh, one of the biggest standouts is changes to the grave sites, their endless minions kind of abilities, etc., and the way that summoning works uh, on both vampires uh, and the units. And so the vampires have a have a great ability now with their hunger. You know, they're they're, they're essentially getting all their wounds, like a, a high number of wounds back every turn. I think it's up to a, a maximum of six. But the way that way that works is is really really good and very streamlined. And you're, it's going to be very hard to get rid of these vampires unless you outright kill them, especially the Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon. It's going to be very hard to get rid of that. Uh, and all the vampires have this flat ability that's really, really great. And and so I won't go into the, the, the massive detail now. There's plenty of other videos out there that go into the, the, the crunch of, of, of those rules. But essentially, you're getting a much more stable uh, version of... of of uh, healing and so this is going to be really really uh, crucial because of the way these pieces work and synergize with everything else in the army but it doesn't stop there we've got um, g really great uh, little glow up for skellies now skeletons in the previous book were sort of nothing but now you've got this situation where this little little humble skeleton unit skeleton warriors which uh, you would know by now I'm a fan of since I've just sculpted one and you see it on all of my videos uh, I love skeletons they're great army of darkness forever and uh, you know and so here we've got a situation where they now get, um, I think it's at the beginning of uh, every combat phase, uh, whether they're in combat or not, uh, slain models can return on a 
plus. And so you're you're generating your skellies back all the time. You know this coupled with things like that uh, that ward, ward save buff, so you could get them to a five up ward. Uh, it's starting to make them pretty durable and pretty tanky. You know, and then they have an additional rule on top of that: if they are outnumbered the opponent, then they're getting a uh, ren one. So they're not doing a huge amount, but you can actually start to do a little bit of damage. There are other other things you could do to to buff that again. Not very much, but there's a little way to add the juice to the skeleton warriors to make them uh, viable as, as even like a little mini combat unit. But ultimately what they are is like a, a nice little durable uh, tar pit that you can that you can then replenish. And then on top of that, as as most of these as these summon units uh, do, you get half the half the unit back when they die, right? You can't then re-half those, but you know, it, it's still it's still very hard to get rid of like a big block of skeleton warriors if you had like a, a reinforced stack. It's gonna be quite hard to, to remove those. And, and this is the same for what's always been the case for zombies, etc. You know, you're looking at some pretty difficult units to, to take off the board. And so that's really uh, strengthening uh, overall of the army. And, the, and again, there's a ton of little abilities and, and, and healing abilities that are sprinkled across the different vampires, the different bloodlines that are going, going to increase this type of healing and going to make it even, even more difficult for your opponent to actually get anything done. And, and, and one of the, the other elements of this, there's things like, you know, uh, things popping up um, outside of three instead of outside of nine. So part of the, the summoning rules does this. Uh, again, I won't go into all the details of that, but essentially you've got ways to uh, um, bring obviously they're not charging or piling in or doing anything this is the endless minions version of the rule but you're getting this sort of like basically you're creating the you know the the horror movie sort of fantasy in your head of the oncoming tide of undead and that's why why i really like this book compared to the previous one this one to me feels like the magical version of undead coming to life and swamping you right uh, as opposed to let's say a more um more virus style zombie movie, which is what the previous uh, book was more like because the zombies had that, you know, the six inch pylon thing and they were doing all this crazy stuff. And, you know, that's sort of been nerfed back a little bit from the zombies and so on. And, and even the Van Hell's um, uh, macabre spell. And now we've got more of this sort of slower reoccurring horde that just comes on and starts filling the space around you. And I think that that's more in keeping with what undead, you know, a magical version of undead is like from a fantasy point of view as opposed to a movie uh, virus sort of uh, contagion point of view, which tends to be faster zombies, you know, and doing all these kinds of rapid things. We're getting a slower, more oncoming horde style. And and they've also uh, buffed the magic. All the magic uh, laws now, the vampire one and the death mage one, are all viable and, and great, and they all do a thing, and you probably would like to take them. We also see some, like, two-cast, you know, um, uh, wizards in the army and things like that. We see a bit more magic being sprinkled around to some of these... Uh, uh, some of these vampires and obviously legion of blood has got the plus one to cast there's other ways to get uh, pluses to cast so we've got this sort of uh army that's starting to look like you know it's using necromancy it's using magic it's summoning it's doing all these things uh, and starts to feel like a real undead horde so as you can tell, uh, I'm very excited to play this army and I'll be definitely uh, going forward and doing that. I've, I've painted quite a lot of the Soulblight range over the course of the years, at least on the channel, you, you've seen a bunch of videos and you'll be seeing more because they're, they're, they're great fun and I enjoy painting them. And so we're gonna continue with that and hopefully I'll get some games in, maybe go to a tournament or two and uh, talk about some of those experiences from a competitive point of view uh, down the track, but we'll see how we go. But uh, certainly they're, they're gonna be uh, up, up in games for you know my local club and everything and, and playing against mates that's going to be a lot of fun uh, just to see what you can get out of them because uh, yeah it's really interesting especially in the current season but even moving forward beyond this season I still think that they're going to be very strong and uh, definitely a contender for the top armies at the moment so I think that's as much as we'll say on our soul bite for the moment we'll definitely maybe revisit this in six months and see if I'm still feeling the same about it and if there's any changes or anything because obviously some of these abilities are very strong and they might get nerfed or or, or changed over the course of the next six months and that might drastically alter the way the game the way the army actually plays so we don't know yet how much of that is going to get FAQ'd or altered over time but at the moment the army is looking uh, really great you know in a different way to something like OBR which is also very strong but it's, it's got its own flavor and it does feel like undead which is uh, really lovely and, and great to see I still want a high level necromancer caster in the army I wish that was a thing just a two cast or a three cast necromancer uh, I'd love that in the army but I know they've gone a different direction with soul blight and then they 
they've moved away from necromancers being a you know a, a big deal in the army and having the vampires be the main thing which is fine it's meant to be a vampire count style army so sure that's great but you know maybe in the future one day uh, so yeah that's where we'll leave it let's see how I've gone painting up this uh, lovely lady and uh, I'll give you my closing thoughts so there we go one furry vamp all done let's take a look okay so yeah you can see you know the She's just a lovely figure, and 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 really anything you do to this is going to be really cool, right? All all the all the lines and the robes and the the dress and so on, the way it flows, you know, it's it, it's great. And um, you know, I've tried to um, echo some of the Belladama color scheme that I did. Uh, if you look at that on the channel, you'll see it. Uh, you know, with a sort of bone kind of uh, ruffles around around her jacket there and so on, and obviously the blue green blend. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, you know, I, I think I think Soulblade are going to be really cool. I think they're going to. Uh, um, be competitive this this season we're coming into the I guess the last year or the last season or two of um, this edition of, of AOS and I think it'll be a lot of fun so I can't wait to get her on the board and and have a bit of a muck around with her because she's got some really good rules if you don't know uh, yeah she's she's pretty cool uh, so yeah I'll leave a nice um, image of her at the end so you can take a look and uh, the paint list as I usually do uh, but otherwise hope you've enjoyed this please hit that like button subscribe button it really helps me out and I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one